Um, yeah, welcome. Um, I would like uh, to show you a little bit uh, about the backgrounds uh, in performance tuning in the Eclipse platform um, and give you an insight on that. Um, shortly introduce myself. I'm uh, Carsten, working for Itemis, a company in Germany, and uh, yeah, my uh, main duty is working on a framework called uh, Eclipse Xtext. Um, that's for creating programming languages. And uh, we heavily use Eclipse. Um, I do, uh, do use it um, every day. Um, and uh, when I work uh, with huge projects, um, Xtax is one of the largest projects at Eclipse. Um, I hate to do wait for my IDE. So um, the thing is, uh, what can we do to speed it up again? Um, yeah. Um, what I actually do is, when I um, see something which is not as fast as I uh, imagine, I immediately start a profiler and look what's actually happening uh, behind the scenes. Um, actually, using a profiler is a good idea unless you're a uh, guy like that. Okay. <laughs> Performance tuning is a um, little bit the hunt of the iceberg. So, um, what you see is actually always the surface. And only if you cut off um, the surface, then another peak comes up. And then you see different things. So um, to uh, tune um, code, you have to um, cut off everything what you see. And then the next thing comes up, and uh, then you work on that. So it's quite a uh, yeah, recursive action. Um, performance matters in, uh, in many ways. Um, first of all, there's a difference between uh, tuning the, uh, the performance in uh, means of speed of the, uh, the environment, but also um, in means of memory consumption. So these are often uh, diverse to, to each other. Uh, when I want to improve the speed, I usually need more memory and vice versa. Um, it is important to, um, that um, yeah, the uh, startup of the Eclipse is, um, is fast, um, the UI must be snappy. Um, build processes are um, also long running. Um, uh, for example, if you install um, software um, on Eclipse, uh, this is long running task and so on. So there are many places to improve. And I would like to show you some examples of how we did that and where. Um, for example, um, we uh, recognize that if you have a large um, uh, search tree, uh, um, search result, 5,000 matches of string, um, and expand that tree. Um, left side was Eclipse Oxygen, right side is Eclipse Photon. And we, we expand that on the same time. You see, okay, that, that's pretty fast now, and this is still blinking and waiting. Um, yeah, w it's ugly. But what was happening behind the scenes? Um, this tree here um, got refreshed all the time, and uh, which each um, child that was expanded, um, it got refreshed again. And uh, also the cursor came back and um, I, it switched between the busy mode and uh, the idle mode. Once you see that, it's quite easy to fix. It's actually um, very few could, uh, okay, you can't re uh, really read it, but um, the old code uh, was uh, just saying, okay, do expand everything. Um, and the new code just turned off refreshing, then do the expand. And when the, um, the tree was expanded, you can refresh again the UI. So you just wait until um, the computation has happened, and then you just display it once and not um, with each node. Project build is also something which uh, bothers me. I, uh, I have a huge amount of projects in my workspace. And actually, the project build is uh, single-threaded. Um, it, it's running on different threads, but uh, it's uh, running sequentially for each project, and each project has a set of, um, of project builders, like a Java builder, a, a schema builder, and, and whatever builders, and they run sequentially for each project. So what we are working now on is uh, to um, enable parallelization of that. Uh, there's a new option which uh, allows you to set, um, I want to build multiple projects at once, but this means um, that uh, this works only when the builders 
configured on that project allow this also. And this is um, ongoing work at the moment. The Java Builder um, has uh, now the option that, uh, that it can participate in uh, such a process, but when you have uh, a second builder which um, is not enabled in such a relaxed rule, um, then uh, it will block again the workspace and uh, it uh, will again um, uh, run sequentially. But this is now what we improve, one builder after each other, uh, that they allow locking of partial trees of the workspace. And when the, this is done and you have unrelated projects in your workspace, um, the Eclipse build uh, framework um, recognizes, okay, I can build these projects in parallel and these must be sequential because the, I have a project relationship between them. When you work on macOS, um, there has also something um, imp been improved in the event dispatching. Um, so the code um, in, the, uh, in the SWT um, implementation of, um, of uh, uh, macOS was um, whenever there was an event in the UI, and there are many events in the UI, like mouse move, uh, clicking, um, uh, keyboard entering, whatever. It decided uh, through a long if-else cascade, what did you actually do? And in the uh, 20th um, uh, uh, switch, it would uh, maybe decide, okay, I moved the mouse. So uh, you did 19 uh, yeah, operations that did not make sense. Um, so this was refactored um, to switch case. So now uh, it could be decided on branch table uh, what is actually uh, the, um, the um, event that you did. The effect is um, we have, uh, pro that's uh, it's actually a screenshot from a profiler called Yorkit um, that I'm heavily using. Um, the effect is that uh, here we saw that um, the, uh, in the display class, uh, the processing rule, this is the event and dispatching, took 13 seconds while measuring, the measuring case is actually uh, 100,000 lines Java code, scrolling that down, so you have plenty of events running on the UI. And um, with the new change, uh, we ca could cut off almost one second of uh, UI processing. And UI processing happens in just one single thread, so um, whatever you can save on the UI thread, uh, this uh, makes the UI res more responsive. So it's, uh, okay, it's just 5% but but um, it's 5% more performance on UI at all. Let's t take another um, example. Uh, we have a um, Git project. We want to import projects. Um, can't really see what, what's written there, but um, I, um, I'm now selecting uh, the Git project, say import projects, and now I see a dialog, and you see here, um, that it shows me very fast um, um, yeah, uh, which files are and folders are uh, now scanned. It looks fast, but isn't. Let's do it nowadays. And actually, uh, you see, already see, I did not see really uh, anything. What's behind that? Um, the thing is, um, when uh, the directory is scanned, it shows each and every single file on the UI thread. So, um, yeah, it, um, it um, makes a synchronous um, call to the UI thread for, yeah, the, the, uh, for each file and folder. But actually, uh, you're only interested in uh, knowing, okay, there's something happening, is uh, processing roughly that directory. We introduced a new API, which is called the Throttler, uh, which you can now use, and um, uh, the idea is um, that, uh, that you can suppress some messages. Uh, you can say, okay, um, it's not necessary to read uh, more um, than one message per 100 milliseconds, for example. So in every, uh, every message between is received uh, but swallowed. And then by introducing, using that throttler and um, to say, okay, um, use the update label function just only 100 milliseconds, that's fast enough for the human eye. So um, you can report as many uh, information as possible to, uh, to the progress monitor, but you get only updates on the UI every 100 milliseconds. So, and so the UI is not slowed down. 
One hotspot that, uh, that we identified as also where, during a complete build is um, that um, uh, the string replace all function uh, popped up in one uh, use case. It's always um, dependent on the use case. Um, in, uh, this won't uh, happen in many different uh, other scenarios. But uh, in this uh, use case, it was a full project built of, on, of a huge uh, workspace. It showed up that uh, the replace all function costs six seconds of time. Okay, that's um, quite much on a, a machine that can uh, compute an endless loop in four seconds. Um, and actually what uh, it, it, um, the suspicious method was here, um, process name in, in, in the API tooling, um, doesn't matter, but uh, actually this is one of the hotspots that we, um, sh uh, showed up. And um, the prob problematic code was this here. So here you see, okay, replace all um, slash by dot. Uh, looks quite normal. What's the problem here? Exactly. This is here um, using a regular expression. Actually, you can just replace that uh, by the replace method um, and say, okay, replace character by character. But um, some unskilled uh, programmer just used replace all because the intention was to replace all slashes by dots. But it's not fast. And um, yeah, after that, um, the method uh, got down here, uh, string replace in this case, uh, example for, uh, to three milliseconds, from six seconds to mi three milliseconds. Check for updates. Um, if you um, yeah, use that function uh, to search for new updates of, um, of uh, plugins installed to Eclipse, um, it showed up that here, here we had a hotspot in the XML writer. So um, writing XML during that process uh, cost two minutes. Of course, there's much happening there. Um, uh, the, uh, regi registries um, in Eclipse are, are XML-based, and uh, when you do updates and they are processed and edited and so on, um, of course you do many uh, XML stuff there. But two minutes uh, during an update process uh, only for writing XML seems a lot of time. What was the problem here? You can't read it really here. It's, um, uh, it's uh, using a writer, XML writer, and print out characters or strings. Problem was only it was unbuffered. So just s simply writing this, uh, wrapping this into a buffered writer, uh, removed that completely. But again, uh, you you have to, uh, to you need to have a use case where you see okay that that might be a problem. Start a profiler, look at what is happening, and uh, then, you, um, then you will find that. By reading the code, you won't find this. Again, another use case um, is, uh, was um, that um, uh, yeah, scrolling down the 100,000 lines of Java code, um, we saw that um, many SWT errors uh, were raised during that. Uh, and they actually costed, uh, cost some time. It's not much, it was again just uh, a second. Um, but looking into that um, was that, um, um, yeah, there was a, a function um, uh, called uh, that tried to um, get an offset of a character at a specific point and um, yeah, this method can return, uh, throw an exception when there is no character at this place. This is totally ex expected, so um, it was just uh, swallowed, this exception. And um, the problem just is, if you do this very frequently and use exceptions as, um, as return types, um, yeah, then the construction and, uh, of uh, exceptions is costly because you have to create a new object and fill in the stack trace. And if you make this um, uh, very often, then this costs time. We introduced just a new method, uh, a new API method, which um, yeah, does the same, but returns 
a negative value in the case uh, that there's no uh, return value. Effect was uh, for this case um, um, in the uh, before the change there were uh, 10,000 uh, illegal argument exceptions thrown, uh, and um, we now saved 1.6 seconds processing time just by changing that. So small so small changes make an effect. Talking about memory a little bit, um, if you start up uh, Eclipse, um, then um, you would uh, recognize that it uh, consumes not so much memory anymore. Um, we are really tweaking that. Um, for example, in, uh, in JDT, we're tweaking uh, the zero length arrays. So um, when you do not have um, uh, annotations, for example, or um, whatever, or, or then um, uh, often the case is that you create a new array with a zero length. And this wastes uh, uh, memory. Uh, we refactored this by using constants, so that you have a single constant and say, okay, if you want to have a, uh, um, an empty array, just use the constant. And so you can um, uh, refactor that. And um, yeah, this is one um, piece of um, one change where we did this. For example, here, here the code was: uh, children is new uh, Java element with children size. Okay, maybe you should check first: um, is the children um, children collection empty? And if it's empty, then just use no elements uh, constant. So um, this is happening in in, J in the Java tooling very frequently, and uh, so you can waste uh, you you are wasting um, memory otherwise. And um, yeah. Here we have another um, uh, place where annotations uh, in Java code. Um, each method can have annotations, and each parameter can have annotations, and so on. But often you don't have any annotations. So the same case here again. Uh, it was uh, half a megabyte of waste. Sounds much, but uh, so sounds few. But um, yeah, we are already microtuning this. Java docs was another place, and so on. You can also um, optimize uh, data structures um, to use. Um, in this uh, example, this is from P2. Um, there's a class which is called the audit properties. It basically holds a map of properties. And often, um, this map is either empty or just has one element. Um, and by default, this uh, the data structure just uses a hash map. But a hash map is um, yeah, huge. Um, for the case that you don't have any um, element, uh, we now initialize this map in, uh, lazily, so it's zero um, when you do not have any properties. And if you have just a single value, um, then a, um, a single map is now um, used from the collections framework. And only if you add a second um, a property to, uh, to this object, then it will uh, use a hash map. So in many, many, many cases, uh, you can um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, use less memory uh, for, for these maps. Um, it showed up here that um, the retained size um, of the, uh, the object of that um, uh, kind uh, used 6 megabytes in this example of memory and 6.2 and after optimization, 4.6. So again, uh, 1.5 megabytes of memory um, uh, saved. Then there was, there was uh, something in JDT um, found. Um, we have here um, um, something which is called the class path access rule. Um, there were 2 million objects of that. In, um, held um, and they used um, um, 200 megabytes of heap space. Uh, the class pass access rule is an information which is available for um, each package, um, for each project in each jar that you have in the workspace. Okay, um, I have a huge workspace and uh, so um, this uh, showed up in, in that amount. But uh, when looking into that, um, it um, 
you know, one can see that actually the you don't need so many instances uh, because many instances are equal. So what we did now is um, analyze that and um, you see it already, it's really ma wasting many times. 200 um, duplicates uh, that are wasting uh, 100 kilobytes of memory, then the next duplication, 199, and so on. many, many, many. This multiplies um, really much. Well, with introducing a, um, a weak cache, we could reduce the same thing to 3,000 instances from 2 million and using 300 uh, kilobytes instead of 200 megabytes of memory. So we, we uh, save 200 megabytes by using this cache. But it raised uh, a bug in, uh, in Eclipse. Um, strangely, during, uh, due, to the in, um, due to the introduction of this cache, um, Eclipse started to um, raise a full build on startup. Totally somehow unrelated, but um, you can, could not know that uh, this was causing that bug. Um, and unfortunately, we actually delivered this with Eclipse Photon. <laughs> But uh, fortunately, it was discovered then, and um, with the new um, release uh, cycle of Eclipse, now every three months, uh, we could uh, fix, uh, um, provide a fix uh, in uh, Eclipse 2018-09. So, um, yeah, now we have the, um, both. Um, we have the uh, yeah, working um, build and, um, and also less mem memory consumption. So um, what I want to show you here is um, this is my development workspace for, uh, for Eclipse platform. It's building around one gigabyte of feed. So we have to make this uh, into a relation. Uh, it's, um, old gen space is around 600 megabytes, and uh, we use Eden space between 100 and 400 megabytes for that building, that workspace. So it's totally sufficient to, uh, with one gigabyte of heap. This are, these are 40 Git repositories. All projects are from these Git repositories. Let's count them. Let's count how many projects are in this workspace. <coughs> and uh, 1,600 uh, 1, projects are in this workspace. Let's count Java files. And yeah, around about 60,000 Java files that are in this workspace. And uh, the IDE is happy with one gigabyte of heap. That's almost nothing. Um, compare that to your Slack client. <laughs> but we still have uh, problems. Um, the slow cr scrolling on macOS is uh, one of the uh, longest running performance problems, and we still not have a solution really for that. Um, actually, uh, some of these um, uh, things that I showed you with the uh, illegal argument uh, exceptions that are thrown and so on, these came from uh, examination of that problem. Uh, on macOS, it's uh, so that, um, um, that uh, yeah, the, slow, uh, the scrolling um, uh, of files doesn't uh, feel nice. Uh, we're still searching for that. Um, that's a, one of the most common bugs on Eclipse. Uh, I think we are at, um, roughly at a common number 360 or so. And many attempts to change that. So, but we're still struggling with that. Uh, we also identified maybe hotspots um, in SWT where we can maybe improve something. There's a class called um, TextWidth, um, and uh, it, consume, uh, it tries to compute uh, the, uh, the width of tabs, uh, and often it's the same. So maybe it's uh, a candidate for caching, but we still do not know if it's valid to cache it here. Um, uh, and uh, we hope to, uh, to improve that um, in the future. Oh, so if you make a text search um, 
with very f um, um, fast results, uh, then you can experience blocking um, of threads. Uh, so we are, this is um, uh, the red bars show that uh, threads are waiting on each other. And you see um, sometimes they do. It's not actually not really a deadlock, um, but close to it. <laughs> Actually, we're working on UI freezes, um, so you, you know this uh, typical uh, spinning wheel of death, um, and uh, this always happens uh, when uh, heavy computations um, are done in the UI thread. And what we try to do is um, to uh, put the computations in the background, in background threads, and come back to the UI thread uh, only to do the display thing. Yeah, okay. And, um, what you see here is um, uh, a screenshot for, um, of uh, an application called the Error Reporting System. Uh, maybe if you use uh, Eclipse, you saw the pop-up, uh, here something happened, um, do you want to report this? And also for UI freezes, um, uh, we get reports um, um, uh, to that, and the Eclipse developers can now see, okay, uh, where do, did we have UI freezes, and then we can focus on that places but still ongoing. Problem that we have is uh, at Eclipse, um, we are strongly API compatible. Um, so um, API never changes. And this makes it sometimes hard to really provide uh, fixes. And uh, we can't really uh, make use of uh, all the fancy stuff that uh, Java uh, provides us with, uh, for concurrency because the uh, API was not designed that way, and we can't just uh, say, okay, we um, uh, changed the API, because uh, there are plenty of tools um, outside uh, that really depend on the, uh, on the stability of the API. For uh, this native uh, thing, uh, the, the scrolling issue, yeah, we are, we are lacking deep knowledge about Cocoa. We are good Java programmers, but um, there, there's not much uh, knowledge about the internals of, uh, of the uh, Mac implementation. So, um, yeah, that's one of the problems. Last thing that I want to show is uh, something that I'm currently working on. Um, um, that's, uh, the use case is, again, um, uh, the software update. So if you um, issue... Um, um, that search for updates, then you see, okay, it contacts all the, um, uh, all the update locations that you um, um, configured. And, um, yeah, it finds that, okay, there's, you have a location which um, is actually a composite of locations, and then it finds, again, it's a composite. So, and this is all happening uh, sequentially. And if you easily end up with hundreds of, location, uh, of update locations uh, that you uh, process sequentially. And the idea is now, why can't this be uh, parallelized? Um, and in a prototype, this is now in the new um, uh, the prototype, on the left side, uh, that's, um, I see the um, um, yeah, debug perspective, and uh, I will now issue um, the software update. And now I see that many threads are um, doing things. What I'm actually doing not right now is uh, just to say, okay, when I have a composite, um, which contains certain amount of children, then um, uh, issue a, a job in the background for each of the children. And then synchronize again uh, when the work is done. Um, and uh, this must just be uh, now polished a little bit. Uh, we need uh, a preference for that in Eclipse UI so that you can say how many threads are allowed to, um, to query um, the network at once because there are uh, limitations um, depending on infrastructure. Some companies don't allow to process um, 20 um, uh, network connections at once or so, and uh, so we need to throttle this. And um, uh, with some luck, we get this uh, into the next um, Eclipse uh, IDE. But uh, if not, then uh, by, for sure with, an, uh, with the version after that. We are already uh, now in Milestone 2 um, uh, release. And 
it's not that much time until Milestone 3 is um, uh, issued and then uh, we can't change anything for the next release and then it has to go in the, in the release after. Yep, I have to stop. Yeah. So thank you. Um, you, see, you saw many things can help and every change that we do there in the Eclipse platform helps millions of users every day. I think I don't have really time for questions now. The next speaker can, uh, can already show up. But if you have questions, I can uh, answer uh, um, them uh, outside. <laughs>